Hello my convicts and convict cats, yes it is I, the Kappa Convict, bringing you guys and gals another video. So today is a video for one of our convicts, we salute you, and it is in fact for Draven here, 4808, saying hey Kappa, you should do some new NetDuma R1 Duma OS setup video. So without further ado, let's get it on. So thank you very much Draven, this is for you buddy. So First of all, you want to load up your NetDuma and sign in, as I have done already, and I'm currently on geo-filtering. I don't really need to be on dashboard because there's not really anything in there. I need to show you the potential is right here, and this is the main area or main two areas you want to be in is geo-filter and QoS. So geo-filtering is pretty standard and straightforward. As you can see, the map here is showing my location to where I've put my placement and it's showing my circle of trust, as you can see, going around there by the moving kind of uh, sonar of this circle. What you need to do to add these devices on here, as you can see, I've currently got it as the Unreal Engine because I was playing Fortnite and it's in spectating mode with filtering mode for PlayStation. Now, if you don't know what that is, you can go and you can press these little question marks and it actually gives you information in regards to what it means. So if you click on this, it will tell you. And it says that the filtering mode will block connections which are outside of this radius. And it's best used for obviously consoles. The spectating mode will not block any connections outside of the radius this is recommended for most pc games which do not require to be filtered so that's the reason why that's in spectating and that is in filtering mode it will automatically put your playstation 4 or xbox into filtering mode as far as i'm aware another thing you want to do as well is go to geo filter map and make sure that you choose your ping assist as you can see i've got 28 now i know my ping can anywhere be between 19 and 20 milliseconds but i put 28 because sometimes i do and when i sign into fortnite it normally does say the connection to their server their data centers is at 28 milliseconds so hence why it says 28 there uh, you can also choose the zoom factor i leave mine on five to be honest you can choose whichever you want eight 10 15 will zoom in more to be honest i can't see you needing to go that far in but that is up to you and your choice strict and auto ping host so strict mode basically stops anyone outside of this circle of trust being able to join unless the ping assist here actually says that they are qualified to come in to your circle because they meet your requirements for connection then they can join they'll actually be ahead or there will be a little rectangular box and they'll have dotted lines a little dot all the way around the outer edge of that and that obviously says that yes they are allowed to join your connection quality of service this is the next one now here you can go in you can choose what your download and upload speeds are by pressing this tab mine's these ones 31.36 and 5.22 i did a quick test to make sure that these were correct the good put you want to leave this enabled i don't know exactly what exactly that does but i leave that as enabled that is what it is as default don't disable QoS, you do want that because that's your quality of service and that's how you're going to obviously use congestion control and all that. So you want to have that disabled uh, and not ticked in the box. So these are what I'm currently using in the moment, 21.6 and 4.2. And I've prioritized 4% of download and upload to my desktop, which you can click on here and it will give you an idea of what it's actually giving to your PC. So it's giving it 4.2 free from here. And if I go on to my up my download, sorry, it will then tell me I'm getting 21.64 is what I'm getting here on there. You can tweak these by going in and saying, okay, I just want 21. And then you can just press it and it will auto assign it to here and just save. And then you can close it. So that's all that I've done for that part. I always have this as always on. So it always prioritizes my PlayStation is obviously I don't want anyone to interfere with my gaming. And share access is on as well. So all my other devices can share the access if there is any access. So it doesn't interfere with me. And if there's any spare, then it will obviously push out the spare. Another cool feature down here as well you want to always have takes is traffic prioritization. You want this prioritized so that it always prioritizes your PlayStation. And it does that by default. 
and it will glow this little button here if you can see it in red and it will prioritize and that says and it's giving all of the the best bandwidth for your download and upload speeds to the PlayStation because obviously it wants to prioritize that you get the best gaming experience. Once you've done that, the only thing I really do go in and change is going to network settings. I go to DHCP and actually add my IP address on which you go to device manager. You can find out where your IPs are in there. And I'm not going to go into that because unfortunately I don't have nowhere to blur it. So I don't want people to see my details or IPs or anything. So I'm going to leave that at the moment. So going on to the next thing, what you can do now is once you've found out all this information, you want to go here and you want to start doing your speed testing. Now I use a company called BT Wholesale to start off with. Now, if you're in the UK, you will be able to use this, especially if you're on such as like EE, uh, EE or any of the companies like that. Let me go into here and I'll give a better explanation. Uh, you've got like BT, there's Sky and many other companies here in the UK. You can use this because BT actually own the lines. So you can actually come in here and put in all the details that you want and it will give you a really accurate test. So I'm just going to give you the base test to start off with. Now this will come up and it will say error. Just left click it and then click allow. And the next one should come up automatic. If it doesn't, you can right click it and it says plug in, something to do with plug in, run plug in. You just want to click yes on that. But mine's automatically doing it already. Now it's not going to give me the proper speeds because I have got my congestion control already on. But I normally get around about 30 and just over 5 for upload speeds. So let's perform my download test. This will perform my upload test. I definitely recommend doing this with the slider set to full. And I would increase your download and upload speed. And maybe leave it at a default value of a, of a thousand down and a thousand up. Just to get the base idea of what your connections are. As you can see here, my connections are different to what it's saying. And it's giving me a 36 ping. Now that's mainly because up here, obviously, I've got it as the wrong one. So if I increase these two up to the full potential and like I said if you go up here to buffer bloat and you change this to 1000 1000 and leave that for the first initial test then it will give you obviously the best chance of getting the best connection possible or the best download and upload speeds and then you can choose to obviously put in whatever values you want to put in there which I'll show you on here so what you need to do is go into further diagnostics. Now this is the main one I wanted to show you, which is why I'm not too bothered about the test that's run here. This one's really the one you want to go into and try out and actually do the information for. Now let me just drag this quickly off screen because it actually asks you for details that I don't want you to see. So I'm just going to put my telephone number in. It'll ask you for your postcode and it'll ask you for your building house number as well, which I'm just going to enter in there. Okay, and then you want to click on run diagnostic test. It will come up with a prompt saying, is this a correct telephone number? Because I obviously want to know it's correct. And then press OK. And then I'll just wait for this to disappear. There we go. And that's going to send the results to the server. And this will give you a very clear indication of exactly what you your connections doing uh, basically a lot of the engineers who come on and do this for you they will actually come and they will come to your property and this is the kind of test they run to make sure your connections are what they should be now at the moment it's saying that my speed should be between 27 and 31 as you can see 27.5 and 31.36 which is what i had it on before and my upload speed was at 3.81 now at the moment it's saying it's the test was conclusive so it doesn't know now this could be because I messed with the sliders because I slid them back up and then I tried performing the test shortly afterwards so I think it's to do with what I've just done just a moment ago which has kind of messed that up so ignore mine what it's saying on here but if you do ever get this way just say it's conclusive or there's any issues here you want to contact your internet service provider and tell them because it could be a potential problem with your line and this is caused 
and it will actually prompt you here. As I did this earlier, as I did recording for this earlier, and I'm recording it again, because <laughs> it went terribly wrong, it actually was fine. So I'm not going to bother about this too much at the moment myself, because it was right, it was fine, and it's because it probably with me messing with the sliders, I've messed up the, the actual test here. So ignore that for now. So I know that's 31.36 and I know my max achievable speed on upload is 10 on there. So what I normally do is I know I definitely won't get 10 for upload. So I put 31.36 and I know my upload speed is anywhere just above 5. So I'm just going to leave it as 5 at the moment for the sake of the test. So once you know what these are, then you can start going off to do other tests, which is what I normally do on my day to day. So if we go to dslreports.com and go to speed test. Now, usually I normally use this just to give me a rough idea of where I wanna be. What you can also do as well, if you log in and sign up with this company, I definitely suggest you do that. You can actually find out what your daily averages are and find out to whether or not it would be beneficial uh, to using the download and uploads on here, which you can do. So if we go to DSL BT Broadband Windows Desktop and go to this tab here, I can actually choose what the best benchmark was for buffer bloat upload, buffer bloat download, the JS benchmark on the minimum latency. Now let's try out the minimum latency. So if I submit this, you can see these red graphs here and they're basically telling me what my ping times were. And I can see more, I can see full data table if I want to, and I can go through all these different data tables. Now as you can see, these were done by PS4, these were done by the actual PC itself. So I can go through these. Now ignore the grades, you don't need to know about them. They're, they're, they don't really count as a factor here. What you want to try and do is find a really good strong ping. Now as you can see, this one was 18, We've got 18 here, and you can see it was around about 19.16 and 3.49. I was a bit lower than that. So anything around 19.16 and 3.49 seems to be okay on there. So what you can do is go back to your NetDuma OS and kind of try and mirror that. So 19.16. So what I could probably do actually is do it here. Uh, and what was the upload? Sorry, because I'm doing it wrong way around. 3.49 and save and download and that needs to be 1916 now this is one way I normally do it and then all I can do then is run another speed test and see how that performs. Now, as you can see, I've got only Euro, Ireland and London. I always pick around these areas because I want them to be as best as I possibly can. Now, I don't think it will show up on here. No, it won't at the moment. So let's cancel that for now because that's not going to show up with me changing those in here it's mainly up here it wants me to do it so let me just quickly do that um speed test let's go back to minimum latency again uh, not minimum latency where's it gone Okay, well, we'll use one of these ones. Use that one. So 16 out of 3 and 419. As you can see, that's really, really nice as well. So 16 out of 3. And let it apply. And then 419. which I think is around, around about there. And just make sure that these are correct. Let's just click on download and desktop. And put 16.3. 
and upload. And what was that one? 419. Okay, so that might need to be a little bit higher. Maybe it needs to be at 4.9. Oops. And it was 419. Let me just lower that down to so it mirrors correctly because I want it to be at least 419. We'll put it to 415, that'd be okay. Okay, so once you've done that and you're quite happy with where it is, then you can go into speed test results again and you can rerun another speed test and see what we do there. So let's try it again. So if, if as you noticed, if you change the flower petal, it doesn't do a great deal of difference. But you can see now my buffer bloat has dropped dramatically. It's only one to maximum, around about five milliseconds at the moment to what it was before. It was in the hundreds. So that was absolutely insanely high for buffer bloat. And now I'm on a three, four, five, two. So it's it's dropped dramatically to where it was. Now obviously with me only having a very low upload of five, I'd have to be very careful how much I reduce my upload because obviously that affects my ability to have my shots register when it's shooting at people. Now ignore these. These don't really matter at all. It's the results and chair, and then you want to go here. And then you want to look at what your items are doing here uh, in regards to the buffer bloat and upload speeds and such. So as you can see here, they're all kind of almost level. My idle's pretty nice, but as you can see, the error bars is not very good in this. These error bars, you want them to be as small as you possibly can get them. Now, it does sometimes differ from time to time. You're not always going to get the same connection all the time. So let me just reduce that by one and let me rerun the test again. And let's see what difference that makes on there. Now I'm just going to do this a couple of times just as an example. It does take a little bit of play testing. And DSL Reports is not probably the best site at the moment. I know when I've talked to Sim in regards to DSL Reports, they've not maintained it or you felt that they've not maintained it as well as what they used to. So it's it's just something to go as a rough guide against rather than looking at it as a d definitive answer. So let's just run this test through. And this is all I do. This is generally what I do on a day-to-day basis. Make sure I've got those eyes really, really small, as I call them a red eye. Get them as small as I possibly can. Get the lowest buffer bloat I can. The score here I don't bother with. And then once I know I've got there, then I know I'm in for some pretty decent games. But as you can see here, still need some tweaking on there, but I'm not going to go into too much into it. Uh, let's just try one more time. I'm going to go and do what I normally do uh, when it, it's deciding to be awkward. Right, let's see how that goes on. But this is what it's all about. It's about trying to find, unfortunately because I'm on the DSL line means that I'm going to have fluctuating speeds. And this could be a number of factors of things, which is obviously my connection going out and then it's going into all that traffic. And you have a connection ratio as well. When you're actually connected to your line, you're actually connected to other people along the line as well, which is the reason why my speeds are not hitting 10 upload. If it was just me on the line, I would have a guaranteed 10 upload. But because other people are using it as well, they slow your speed down. And because I'm quite far from where I am, it's a good few thousand feet of uh, line that we're having to get through of copper, means that my drop-offs are going to obviously affect my line and speed as well. So again, ignore that. 
you don't want to be too low uh, in the quality you don't have this lower than a D grade but it's not too bad the upload needs some working on there as you can see I'm getting some fluctuation today which is why I tend to be a bit more cautious when I'm playing games as I've said before my connection is not the best and it can be really really awkward at times to get really good gameplays at certain times especially for such as like Call of Duty when you know obviously the connection is not as great as what it can be but you just have to keep playing and like I've shown you before in the previous ones it is possible for me to get really really good connections by using this and finding what my minimum latencies are because I've had it like I've shown on here a good solid 18-19 milliseconds so it is possible to lower your connection and get really really good ping times it's just unfortunate today it's not showing that in this video so there you have it so that's how I do it that's how I set up my NetDuma all I basically do is make sure my D, my DHCP that I've got the correct so I make it an address that is the same every single time so you can have the last three numbers of 300 and just type that in as 300 and then every time you sign your device in it will automatically through the NetDuma assign it 300 I also go to into the other item on there as well which is uh, port forwarding which I can't show you because it will show my IP as well but I go into port forwarding and I port all my I go on to all the ports and forward them. How you can do this is if you go into a new tab and you go PS4 port fo forward. And there you go. They're all here. And you just basically type in TCP for 80, TCP for 43, TCP for all these ones. And then at the bottom, these two here is UDP and you port forward them to as well. If there's any other games you want to do it, you can do it for such as like Fortnite, port forward, and you can see plenty of videos on here, but there is a, a thing you can go on here for port forwarding on your router for Fortnite. You can click on there for the port forward and it'll actually tell you what your ports are, which are here. And you can put these in as well. Now I've literally gone through and I've got the one for PlayStation Network. I've got these ones for Fortnite. I've got the ones I've just shown you for port forward for the uh, for normal just standard port forward. And make sure all of these numbers are entered so that I always get a really great connection as best as I possibly can. Especially for Call of Duty where sometimes you get that annoying issue where it basically won't come come up properly or it gives you moderate and strict nat types which is really annoying but that's how we do it that's how i generally spend my time setting up my net Duma. i don't really do too much else from that i just use the speed test to make sure i acquire now one thing you can do as well that i have noticed on here if you go into it if you want to have your true full potential of your speeds then what you can do is up your speed higher than what it is normally and then keep running the test in order to do that in order to get the best speed possible if you want the full potential speed one thing I've noticed here if you put these values in they'll actually give you less than these values so you always want to try and increase these values and put them a little bit higher than normal sometimes I generally have that as 40 and I have that as uh, a 6 or a 7 because what I've noticed if you do through like UCLA or speed testing, it'll actually be less than what your speed is. So you want to increase them a little bit above. And then you know you can just drag these sliders down to what you know your speed would be. And then at least you're getting the full potential speed that you know and that you want. So obviously I could use this as 30. I could use this as uh, 5. And I'll know then that... I'm going to get that increased speed if I can get it, but these are set to the right values, so I'm not going to be getting a huge amount of upload. And then obviously reduce these, reduce this, make sure you prioritize the right device, and you're pretty good to go. 
So there we go. Hopefully this has not been too long-winded for you, my convicts and convicats. And thank you again to Draven4808 for the really cool comments. As you can see, a big fat thumbs up and a like from me on all things Netduma related. So you know this, it is I, the Kemper Convict. I'm standing out and as always, I salute you my convicts and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye for now.